Why can't I see the moon every night? Why do I sometimes see the moon during the day? And why isn't the moon in exactly the same place it was yesterday? These are three very common questions, and to help explain them to you, I've made this lovely display. To start with, I've got the light bulb over here, representing the sun, and the my mug here, as always, represents the earth, and the worthless bit of plastic on there represents me. I'm keeping this as simple as possible to make it easy to understand. Just assume I'm standing on the equator and it's one of the equinoxes, and don't worry about the fine details. So when I'm square onto the sun, and the sun is directly overhead, it's midday. And as the earth rotates, and I am now completely hidden by the earth, it's midnight. As the earth rotates, the sun comes into view, it's 6 a.m., it's sunrise. I know, I told you not to worry about it, I'm keeping it straightforward. So as the earth rotates, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. So let's add the moon. And I want to put it in line with the sun. So you can see, therefore, that the moon also rises in the east and sets in the west. And it doesn't matter where I put the moon, as long as the earth is rotating, the moon will always rise in the east and set in the west. But of course the moon is also moving, and it takes the moon one month to do a trip around the Earth. Confusingly, in our calendar, months are different lengths. But a month, in terms of the moon, is 29 and a half days. So let's start the month and put the moon in line with the sun. As it's there, it rises with the sun and sets with the sun. And it's lit from behind. It's called the new moon, and I can't see it during the day or the night. The next day, the moon has moved a portion of its lap around the Earth. It now rises 50 minutes later than the sun and sets 50 minutes later than the sun. I can now see the moon for almost an hour after sunset, and I can see a tiny sliver of the moon. This is called the waxing crescent. Waxing here means building up, as in wax lyrical. I know in the Karate Kid they say wax on, wax off, but it should be wax on, wipe off. The moon is building up, it's waxing. Each day the moon will move relative to me, and will rise 50 minutes later each day. After a week, it's moved to about here, so it's a square onto me. You can see now that the moon will rise at midday and set at midnight. And from my point of view, half the moon is lit. You know when you get a bed for one person it's called a single, and a bed for two people is called a double, but the size in between that isn't a one and a half but a three quarter? Well, the moon between a new moon and a full moon isn't the half moon but the quarter moon. Eleven days into the month and the moon is about here. It now rises at 3 p.m and can be seen clearly most of the night, until it sets at about 3 a.m. This is called the waxing gibbous. Gibbous means humpbacked, because it represents a humpbacked person. Halfway through the month, and the moon is here. It now rises as the sun sets, and sets as the sun rises. This is the full moon, and can be seen all night long. Now the moon is in its waning phase. It's been waxing and now it's waning. It's getting less and less every day. Now I have to wait till 9pm in the evening to see the moon rise. But I will see it still as the sun rises in the morning. I'll see it in the daytime. So the phases go as before but in reverse. From waning gibbous to quarter moon to waning crescent to just a tiny sliver available to see which is known as the old moon. Now that's a very basic explanation. There's lots of other little factors to take into account, such as the time of year and where you are on Earth, but let's not worry about that now. Let's worry about three things that people get wrong. This is not the shape of a crescent moon. The crescent always starts and stops at the top and bottom of the moon. However, this shape can exist in the celestial realm. It's an eclipsed sun. 
Secondly, there is no dark side of the moon. The side of the moon we cannot see from Earth is the far side of the moon. It's not dark. Thirdly, when you see a crescent moon, the rest of the moon is still there. It's not invisible. So if you see a picture of the crescent moon with a star inside it, then it's completely ridiculous. Anyway, there was one thing that I never used to understand, which is why we don't have an eclipse every month. If the moon was between the Earth and the Sun in its new moon phase, how come we weren't plunged into darkness? To show why, it's worth seeing how these bodies look in scale. Here's the Earth and the Moon in their relative sizes, but here's how they look when placed in the correct distance apart. When you add the Sun to that picture, you can see that there is an awful lot of space in space. Oh, maybe that's why it's called space. Anyhow, the Moon would have to line up exactly in the right place, but it doesn't actually rotate around the Earth in line with the Sun. It varies about 5 degrees above or below, so it only lines up every 18 months or so, and that is when there's an eclipse somewhere on Earth. Something else I really like to look out for is when there's a crescent moon, but you can still just make out a portion of the unlit side. This is because the unlit portion of the moon is receiving light reflected from us on Earth, and that is called Earthshine. Nice. Coffee time, I think.